This video will discuss robots and the different types of robotic applications, control, joints, and configurations. A robot is a machine that performs a task automatically. Usually it has complex motion sequences and is computer programmed and can replace human labor. Robots are great for very repetitive tasks that require a lot of precision or for very heavy lifting. Things that don't take a lot of cognitive effort but need to be repeatable and the same every time. A prime mover or an actuator is a machine or component that converts energy from a source into a mechanical output. So those are things like motors, cylinders, pretty much anything that makes an object move. Now, the mechatronic system is the whole electromechanical system required to do the automation task. So you can see on here, there's some power source goes to the actuator through a transmission, which is all the joints of the robot, to the end effector. The end effector is the claw. Now, a lot of times there, on the, the robot will have built-in internal sensors, so it knows what position its joints are at or how fast they're moving. And sometimes there are external sensors in the environment that will show if obstacles are, are coming or um, if a person walks in the way, like say there's a light curtain or it's maybe a camera to show like where are certain objects. Then those all go to the robot's controller where the code is running and the code will output the signal to the actuator. The person can program the robot using an HMI or GUI so that the robot knows what points to go to. Robots are used in tons of applications. So welding, like arc welding or spot welding, um, materials handling, machine tending, packing, palletizing, pretty much anything where you need something moved from one spot to another spot. So to view a video of robots doing Lots of these types of applications go to the link. There are two categories of control. High level control, which is the upper level coordination of all the joints. That's basically like the perform task, main code. And then the low level control is each joint individually. So what happens when you need to turn um, joint one, joint two, joint three, the low level control is the actual signals to the motor. There are lots of control types. Um, we'll cover four of the main ones. So point to point is when the robot goes straight from one point to the next point, to the next point in straight lines. Then continuous path links those points smoothly. So instead of starting and stopping in each spot, the robot keeps moving from the beginning all the way to the end smoothly. Now, point to point and continuous path can both be open loop, um, but a controlled path is where the robot doesn't necessarily go to individual points, but its whole path is maybe a function of time or position or something like that. So think of it like an integral as opposed to a Riemann sum. Now, closed loop is when there are sensors in the environment that provide feedback. And whereas open loop has no sensors. So closed loop control is good for stuff like object detection, obstacle avoidance, line following, autonomous driving, flying, things like that where you need sensors to make sure that nothing is in the way and the robot is on the right track. Finally, stop to stop control is something that you never want to use. That is when you just press start, the robot goes, and then you have to hit emergency stop. You don't know what the robot is going to do or how it is going to get there. This is a very dangerous type of control to use, and I will illustrate that with an example. When I was working at a robotics startup, we had this big ABB robot. Um, you can see the forklift in the background, so this robot is huge. And I had to calibrate it to this camera up here so that the robot would be able to identify boxes on the cart 
and put the boxes onto a conveyor that you can't see here. So I had this calibration card. It has dots that are a certain size, spaced a certain distance apart, and the robot waves it around under the camera. Then the camera tracks all of those points and tells the robot um, to basically calibrates the robot to where are things in the environment. Well, since I needed to run the calibration, I looked at the controller and I noticed there were three different versions of the calibration code on there. So I asked the programmer, how will the robot know which version of the code to run? He said, it will know, just press start. So that's what I did. You can see the effects here. The robot slammed the calibration card into this aluminum pole and could have decapitated me if I if that pole had not been there. So never, never just press start. Always make sure that you know what is programmed into that robot and what its sequence of moves is. You can also test the robot by stepping through the code slowly rather than just press start at the very beginning and letting it whiz through its thing. Then there are two types of joints that the robots have. Revolute is rotation. This is when you have a motor. Prismatic is translation, and that is when you have hydraulic or pneumatic cylinders. So you can see them here in three dimensions and in two dimensions and how they would be abbreviated. And then the two categories of robots are serial and parallel. Serial robots are one giant arm that has, they start at the base and they go out to the tip. And there's only one attachment point to the ground. Parallel robots have multiple legs. So multiple attachment points to the ground and then they have a platform on top that is the end effector. There are benefits to both types. Serial robots have easier forward kinematics, which is figuring out where is the tip of the robot if you know the joint positions. And then they have harder inverse kinematics, um, which is if you know where the tip is, find what the joint values are. Um, the reason for that is because to get to one certain tip pose, you could have multiple solutions to the inverse kinematics, multiple positions that the serial robot could be in. Whereas for a parallel robot, for that platform to be in a certain spot, there is only one way that the legs could be, one thing, one possible solution to that calculation. Um, serial robots are more articulate, so they have a big workspace. They can reach lots of stuff at lots of different orientations, whereas parallel robots are, don't have a lot of flexibility, but they're very stable because they have multiple legs. They're more accurate because the errors cancel out rather than all adding up like they do with a serial robot. You can see with a serial robot, if joint one has an error, then joint two, then joint three, and so on, the errors will compound. Whereas with a parallel robot, the errors tend to cancel each other out because they pull kind of in opposite directions. The most common type of robot that you will see in industry is a six axis robotic arm. So you can see it has joint one, which is here, joint two, joint three, joint four, joint five, joint six, all revolute. Then for a spherical or polar robot, this can act in like cylindrical or spherical coordinates. So two revolute joints and one prismatic joint. You can click the link to see a video of this one working. A scare robot is often used in surgery or for like very precise pick and place activities. This one you can see is also an RRP robot, but the joints are sort of offset and in a slightly different position pointing than the one before. Cylindrical robot moves in a cylinder. This is also good for pick and place. You can see this one is different because it's RPP, so it has one revolute joint and then two prismatic joints. Click the link to see the video. A prismatic robot, PPP, 
This is um, like a gantry system. It could be used in a 3D printer or for moving boxes um, around a conveyor system for more large scale industrial type of settings. So these are the easiest ones to calculate because it basically moves in X, Y, Z. So only three possible directions for it to go, very easy to calculate. Um, a 3RPR robot has three legs and each one has revolute, prismatic, revolute joints. So you can see the two dimensional one shown here and then the Stewart platform, um, which is kind of the three dimensional version. So you can click the link to see the video there. And this is used in like helicopter positioning systems. They have stuff like that. Finally, the Delta robot is another type of parallel robot. This one is kind of more complicated to calculate because of all of those joints, three RRR. And this one can be used in very precise pick and place applications. A lot of times they will like be mounted up above a conveyor to stack pancakes or sausages or whatever for food processing, but they can be used in pretty much any type of like high precision stacking application. Finally, for a couple more definitions here, you will need to be able to relate joint positions to end effector pose. So the angles of each joint or the linear position, if it is a cylinder, have to relate to the position of the end effector, X, Y, Z position and RPW, roll pitch yaw orientation. Position plus orientation is pose. So the forward kinematics takes you from joint positions to the end effector pose. So if you know all of the joint positions, use forward kinematics, calculate end effector pose. And inverse kinematics goes the opposite direction. If you're given the end effector pose, the XYZ, the roll pitch y'all, then you can back calculate the joint positions.